Hey, what's up everybody? Cody from Detroit Speed here, and we have a lot of cool updates to talk about in this episode. Brian's 69 Camaro is going through some extensive fabrication work. Roger's 1968 Mustang just came back from media blasting yesterday and it now has a fresh coat of epoxy on it. And Simon's 1970 Chevelle, well, we dropped the body down on the chassis. So the last time we took a look at Simon's Chevelle, it was in the paint booth, and now we have a body on a chassis. So, Zach, so kind of walk us through everything we've done in the past, uh, the past month on uh, Simon's Chevelle here. So like you said, the last time that you guys saw the car was in the paint booth. Uh, we've now gotten it out. We've started a lot of the wet sanding and buffing process. So we've gotten through the first uh, sanding on the body. We still have to do the rest of the parts. The body is now completely wet sanded. We've started to buff it. Now that we have the body on the chassis, um, the goal right now is to essentially get everything ready to go to the interior shop. So we're gonna start installing components like the, you know, the vintage air AC system, all the, the wiring, the dashboard, steering components, you know, just everything that's going to have to be on the inside cabin of the car so that the interior shop can do their job. Hoff has already gone ahead and gotten the whole inside of the car all nice and lined with Dynamat, so it'll be nice and quiet and vibration free. We tend to go a little bit excessive. I know some people kind of patch it in. Generally, we'll try to cover as much of that inside skin as we can just to, to make it as comfortable as possible going down the road. Now that the Dynamat is in it, we can start putting stuff in, you know, all the windows, the regulators, seals. When are we expecting it to leave? Uh, it'll, be, it'll be gone within the next within the next month or so, yeah, is the goal. So to the next shop vlog, it may not even be here, so. And where, where's it going? It's going to Steve Holcomb. Uh, he's located in Knoxville, in Knoxville, Tennessee. So it's the first time working with Steve, so we're actually really excited to, to do so. He's got a great reputation, uh, and we have a really cool rendering for this car. Very classic styling, but updated with modern materials and, and you know, all the trim and stereo and all that. So should be a really cool, uh, really cool look, fit the car very well. So like Zach said, the interior is fully dynamated. Uh, up next, I've got to get the trunk, but I wanted to wait until it got on the ground a little lower to make it a little e easier, accessible yeah. to do it. It was a little hard to get in and out with, uh, with the body on the cart, but uh, Dynamat actually went ahead and they, they sent us their, uh, their new Pro X, which is a little bit thicker of a foil, a little bit thicker of a butyl, uh, but they just sent us a small box of it to try out. So. We're gonna put it kind of on the center of the rear floor and see if we can't cut out on some of the exhaust drone and stuff that you tend to have with <laughs> big engines and big exhaust pipes, you know. So we'll try it out on this and you know, who knows, maybe we'll just switch over to the new stuff on the, on the Mustang when it gets time. Nice, and this is three inch exhaust that's going on this? Yeah, full custom, three inch exhaust, um, hooker, mufflers. Where are we, uh, where's the exhaust dumping? Is it gonna come straight out the back or are we gonna do dumps or? Uh, the exhaust will be our typical kind of exit point. It'll stop just before the rear bumper and it's just got a, a nice little turn down. So okay. from the back of the car, you won't really see it much unless you stand way back. Um, so it'll be kind of tucked up and hidden, but it'll still, you know, it'll still completely exit the body because you don't want to trap all that noise and, and fumes and everything underneath the, underneath the chassis. So. We always make sure to run them all the way back, but yeah, it'll just have a little bit of a turn down, nothing special. And then I see you've got a lot of the wet sanding already done. Yeah, so at this stage, um, you know, similar to the trunk, it was just easier to reach the roof once we got the body down on the chassis. Um, but we went ahead and we already polished the rockers and the quarter panels with kind of the initial cut. So it's been done with the first compound and a wool pad. Um, so it'll be, you know, it'll have a little bit of a haze in it. Um, but generally we try to get that first cut done before it goes to interior. Um, but we'll do the really heavy final polishing, you know, after the interior shop has had it and after a lot of the assembly has been done, just because the hands working on the car and, you know, micro scratches from dusting it off all the time and, you know, things of that nature. So the first cut is generally where we'll stop till later. And then we'll, we'll do a really, really nice final polish once it's, uh, once it's more assembled. I want to focus on the inside here of like what our plans are. Now starting from the package tray here, we're going to do, I'm assuming, buckets down inside. Yeah, so like a lot of the other cars that we've done, we have custom made speaker buckets to go down, um, uh, down inside there with six by nines in the package tray. And then it's got a 10 inch subwoofer, which is actually on the bench right over here. 10 inch JL audio subwoofer. Um, the whole stereo is JL. And then we're using a retro sound uh, radio in the dash just to kind of keep the classic look. That's what Simon wanted on this car. So he didn't want a you know, crazy touchscreen or anything like that. So very mellow, very tucked away. 
And what seats are going to here? I think they're they're Cobra Classics, I think is, is the name of the seat. They'll all get recovered and you know they might do a little bit of foam work to those, just kind of like, you know, sometimes we'll do with the Recaros as well. All right, so Hoff was really excited to talk about this dipstick tube that he made. So Hoff, walk us through your dipstick tube here. Let me tell you about my dipstick tube. <laughs> Uh, with the headers on this car, the primaries were so large and the way they were routed, typical braided dipstick wouldn't get around any of the headers where it wasn't resting on the headers and scratching it up. And when we'd get it kind of close out of the way, you'd put the dipstick tube in and it would, it would get bound up and caught the lip once it comes into the pan. After trying two different braided styles, we ended up go, deciding I can make a, a stainless hard line to run down there to get around these tubes. And I figured while we're working on it, might as well make it easy to get to, as opposed to step back here in the in the primaries of the header where you're most likely gonna be burned trying to unlock this locking dipstick. I made this tube that come up and up front, across to the front of the motor with about 12 degrees of angle for all the oil to, to run back down to keep it from getting caught in the top of the tube. So everything's angled. I ended up being 12 and a half degrees to get all the run back to go down to the back to the pan. But we had to keep the bends nice and smooth and large radius. So that way it didn't get caught as you're trying to put it in. Yeah. Deep to going down. Because if any tighter, it wouldn't let it go down because the bottom of the dipstick wouldn't bend. And you said locking. Yep, we ended up going with a locking dipstick. Sometimes stroker motors will have a lot of crank case pressure and blow out dipsticks. I don't know if we're gonna have that problem with this one, but I figured we're making one. Better be safe than sorry. We'll give it a shot. And with it being up so front, so close to the front of the motor and easy to get to, it's easy to put two hands on it. You see the dipstick is not actually in here yet. It's sitting on the table. I still got to cut it to length. And where did you get this from? This is a low car piece. So about here up is all low car. And then we adapted it to run to a half inch tube and then a three eighths the rest of the way down. He was very excited about this. It's one of my favorite parts. I want to do it to all the cars now. <laughs> very cool. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at Brian's 1969 Camaro. A lot of fab work has been done on this recently. Curtis and Bruce have been tag teaming it, getting everything done, new panels and everything. So Bruce, walk us through everything. Uh, she's got quite a bit of metal on her. Fender is courtesy of AMD Auto Metal Direct. Two brand new quarters on it, and also the inner structure inside. Uh, she took a hit, we think, from above. So a lot of that stuff was crumpled and had to redo it. New roof skin, not in place yet, but that'll be getting redone. Also, complete new trunk floor, new tail panel. Pretty much every single piece of sheet metal will be replaced on this. Most of the floor is in good condition, except for in the trunk area back here. Uh, Curtis has also shaved the mic marker lights. He got the outer tub in yesterday. This will allow me to start putting the DSC mini tub on that side. Um, I've already got some of the tub job done over here. I just got done grinding some of our block off plates for whenever you cut the tub out. This is a plate and that's a plate there. Gonna soon be putting a tub in there, folding these back over and welding her all in. And then this is getting quadrilink, so you haven't started any of like the bracketry for that yet, right? Nope, haven't done any quadrilink. That'll be after the tubs. So do you put both tubs in first or do you do one and then kind of work your way over? You can fit them both in there, but to get the cross member in, you'll want to leave one out. That way you can slide the cross member in there and then put the tub in after that okay. before you fully weld it up. All right, so aside from the exterior here, they also had to change some of the interior structure, which is what this... Uh... The, yeah, this entire piece right here is uh, brand new on both sides. Had a little bit of damage, so I went ahead and replaced those. Where was the damage? You said the damage came from up top, we think? Yeah, it looked like something had hit it. Like a tree or something? Because this floor is actually in pretty decent shape. Rockers are really solid, so won't have to do much there. I mean, obviously, we're going to have to change out the tunnel. Are we doing a, are we putting a wider tunnel in here? Yeah, it'll get a T56 transmission. So okay, so we'll have to widen yeah, it. Yeah, widen the tunnel a bit. We've removed some bracing here for the tubs. Uh, that'll get put back in once the new tub is welded in. Uh, are we keeping the package tray or replacing it as well? Package tray is uh, pretty crusty back here, so we're going to get a new one of those and throw that in there too. And Bruce has our clutch master cylinder bracket welded in up there. That is uh, something you can buy right here from Detroit Speed, along with the uh, firewall closeout fill panel there. All right, Bruce, what's all this down here? This is uh, some of Roger's Mustang that has come back from blast yesterday and getting ready to 
send it off, put it in epoxy so we don't get any rust on it. Um, body's over there right now, getting epoxy laid on it. She'll be in the body shop soon and getting the paint process started. So we just got Rogers 1968 Mustang back from media blasting and did a very nice job putting some epoxy on it. So we are looking at the underside right here. We've got a lot of DSC goodies. Here we got the modifications made for our Luma frame. We got our shock tower delete panels. You walk a little further back, you got our subframe connectors and tie into the upper bracket for the Quadralink. And the rest of our Quadralink goodies, track bar, shock mounts, it's all done. Fab's complete on the car. We're going over to body work. Got the mini tubs in it. So we've got the top side of the Aluma frame here. Modification for our air intake, our electrical pass-throughs, the modifications we did to the brake and steering area, smoothed the firewall, deleted the air intake vents because they're no longer needed with the vintage air. Did what we needed to modify into the floor. And just overall cleaned up the body, deleted stuff that wasn't needed. We widened the tunnel, right? Yeah, the tunnel was widened for that uh, Bowler T56. The modifications necessary to get the updated driveline in it. And overall, really happy with the shape of the body. Really smooth, not a whole lot of dents or anything we really have to worry about. Yeah, this car, I mean, it came to us in pretty decent condition, right? Yeah, supposedly it came out of a container in California. Yeah, we really weren't too too terrified by the body. Very little rust on the car. It really just needed uh, lining up and gapping. Didn't replace a whole lot of panels. What was was 40 years of damage. I mean, did a trunk and a fender and a door skin and the rest of it's all original body panels. Don't quote me, but I think a 225, 235 might be the biggest you can get. So then with our mini tubs, we can- Mini tubs and getting rid of the uh, leaf springs with the Quadralink, it's 315 under it now. Or 315's on the rear, 275's on the front. Yeah, uh, we should probably be going from like a, I don't know, six, seven inch tire to a 12 plus tire. Uh, proper DSE. Make the car hold the Car or California Canyon's a little bit harder. What's our, uh, do we know potentially how much horsepower we're gonna have? <laughs> the 5.2 XS, I think's good for 580. And with the, uh, the Holly intake on it, might free up a few more ponies. So, that'd be nice to have some big old rubber meats. Oh there. yeah, sure you'll be able to shred them. So those are all the updates for the project shop this month. If you have any questions about anything going on in the shop, feel free to drop us a comment below. And if you have any questions about Detroit Speed products, you can give our sales team a call at 704-662-3272 or shoot us an email at sales at And as always, we'll see you on the next one.